Greetings from the Integrate Project team. This course module will focus on the concept and benefits of integrated multi-trophic aquaculture, also known as IMTA. So the module is structured in five different subsections. First, it will introduce the definition and general concept of IMTA, its benefit and challenges the types of species that have been studied in IMTA system, as well as the system and their designs. Then it provides some example and designs of species that have a potential to be integrated to IMTA system, and then a general overview of species selection for their integration in IMTA systems. So what is IMTA? It's considered a more sustainable and resource efficient as well as space efficient sort of aquaculture. However, defining IMTA is not an easy task. It might even carry a risk of constraining its update. This is due to the fact that it's more of a concept and it's not a formula as Thierry Chopin has stated previously. On the other hand, it's necessary to define it in order to limit the risk of abuse and found ourselves with any production system carrying multiple species being labelled as IMTA. In order to provide a conceptual definition of IMTA, various meetings and roundtables have taken place throughout the Integrate project. They've also highlighted that incentives are required in order to stimulate its development. To provide an IMTA definition, the Integrate project has developed different questionnaires to define areas of consensus or lack of it. And the project has also organized various workshops to discuss about possible disagreement and to find a consensus on building blocks to reach a definition of IMTA. These tables provide an overview of these different activities and the results that have been reached after the different exchange that have taken place. Here you can find two definitions of IMTA, an existing one and the definition that has been reached by the Integrate project. However, as previously indicated, these definitions are a mean and not an end in itself. They provide a basis to facilitate the implementation of IMTA policies and foster its commercial uptake by the aquaculture sector. They are also used to facilitate or contribute to the development of industry-driven eco-certification. So here is some further information on the functioning of an IMTA system. So basically, it's a system that utilizes the waste from one species as nutrients for another in order to maximize the use of resources within the system. Therefore, it includes different species from various trophic level, some of them being fed species and others being extractive species. And their integration in the system, as, the, as well as the ratio at which they are found within the system, will allow it to be balanced. Integrated multi-trophic aquaculture promotes environmental sustainability as well as economical viability for the producers. Applying it and the interest of this concept is that you, it can be applied in different environment or production units. This includes seawater, brackish water, fresh water, open or closed systems and land or sea based systems, etc. It has also been referred to as a way to ecologically engineer a new era, era standing for environmental responsible aquaculture. Integrated multitrophic aquaculture is associated with multiple benefits. These can be environmental benefits, such as the reduction of organic matter through biomitigation, and therefore consequent reduction of environmental impact and an improvement of water quality, as well as the provision of ecosystem services. In terms of technological benefits, IMTA can provide renewable food sources, as well as byproducts, of high value for other sectors, and it can also increase resources efficiency. In terms of economical benefits, IMTA can increase circularity in the economic processes and promotes product diversification within the same production unit, 
and therefore increase the profits per production units and consequently provide a better use of space. The production of species in integrated multitrophic aquaculture can also be associated with social and economical benefits such as an increase in employment linked by the additional income streams uh, provided from the system. It could also contribute to improve the image and the perception of aquaculture by the public and it can contribute to species diversification in aquaculture as well as increase the industry competitiveness and ensure better food safety. It can also provide opportunities for education, ecotourism, and it opens opportunities to initiate partnerships with different sectors. Although IMTA comes associated with multiple benefits, some challenges are also observed, as the species that are to be integrated should also ensure that they are technically and economically viable and that they can produce marketable products cultured at densities that optimize the uptake and the use of material throughout the production cycle of each of the different species included. The technical challenges will depend on the number of compartments of the system, on the species themselves, the ones that are selected, and if they are sea or land-based system or open or recirculated system, the technical challenges are linked to the need to synchronize the production cycle of the different species, which lead to an increased farm management to optimize the species ratio and to balance the system between the inputs and the outputs of the different trophic levels. The environmental challenges are linked to the need to quantify the environmental benefits for each of the species at each of the different geographical locations where the system are implemented. Therefore, they require the testing of multiple pilots in order to improve the quantification of these environmental benefits. The fact that IMTA systems are labor-intensive and more complex than monoculture can be associated with some extra cost also. In terms of social and regulatory aspects, the fact that there is no specific regulatory framework um, leads into some legislative and regulatory bottlenecks. The development of IMTA systems uh, also need to have a recognized social acceptability and uh, they also can be um, confronted with a space competition and spatial issue between sectors. Here is the commonly employed conceptual model to describe an IMTA system where you can find at the center of the image the fed species that are providing some organic and inorganic nutrients to the surrounding environment. The organic nutrients will be taken up by organic extractive species, normally filter feeders, while the inorganic nutrients will be taken up by macroalgae. At the bottom or on the side of the system are present the organic deposit feeders that are making use of the particulate organic matter liberated by the fed species that are being produced. However, as previously mentioned, the IMTA system can be applied to multiple species from different environments. Here, the illustration highlights the example of a small-scale aquaponic system, for example, so therefore a freshwater system, while on the right it illustrates the possibility to implement IMTA at sea in open system associated with another economic sector such as the renewable energies. Concretely, here we provide example of species that can be integrated in IMTA system and that could provide some new species of interest for aquaculture. So on the left, there is an example of a land-based IMTA system that include exclusively low trophic species in that particular case, abalone, together with sea cucumber that are acting as the extract extractive species. And in that case, the sea cucumber can make use of the abalone deposit and could result in an, uh, an additional aquaculture product. In the center, we find another example of a land-based IMTA system integrating abalone together with macroalgae, in that case, the macroalgae 
uh, are the um, extractive species that are able to reuse the inorganic uh, nutrients being produced in the system. And on the right is the example of a sea-based IMTA system, also integrating abalone and microalgae, where the microalgae are the ext extractive species. Um, in that case, we have the illustration of a brackish and freshwater system. On the left, uh, we can find a sketch of a bioflock system that integrates shrimp and tilapia and that has as extractive species uh, salicornia and uh, seaweed. Uh, in that case, the system allows to reach higher yields and as well as nitrogen and phosphorus retention. Well, it also enables to increase the seaweed nutritional quality. And on the right, we find the example of a freshwater system that integrates fish production, allowing the production of different vegetables. To sustain the multiple benefits of the integrated multitrophic aquaculture system, it's important to focus on the selection of species that will be integrated in the system. And this requires a thorough understanding of ecological, environmental and economical factors that are involved in the system and its, in its behavior. This in order to ensure that there will be a balance between the different species, which will be the key to ensure the sustainability of the aquaculture ecosystem. Therefore, to select the species, it's important to have access to knowledge on the biology, the behavior and the husbandry requirements of the species. It's also important to take into account the species compatibility. Compatibility in terms of environmental requirements and resource utilization. This to maximize the nutrient cycling and the productivity of the system. It's also important to take into account the requirement that will ensure maximum growth rate of the different species and an ideal harvest time of these species. Another important aspect is to ensure the implementation of biosecurity measure within the system to prevent disease outbreaks. It's also important to evaluate the potential ecological impact of new species introduction in the system. This requires the adoption of adapted monitoring strategies in terms of production and environmental impact, as well as regulatory aspects in order to comply with local, regional or national regulation, as well as permits requirements. And finally, for species selection, it's also important to have some knowledge about market demands for the selected species in order to foster the economic viability of the IMTA systems. Thank you very much for your attention and on behalf of the Integrate project team, we sincerely hope that this model will contribute to a wider and long-term development of integrated multitrophic aquaculture in different regions of the globe.